Hi, welcome to Mark's Basement Arcade. Today we are going to be removing the chime box out of my Grand Prix. So let's get started. There's going to be three screws and a wire hookup. The wire hookup is right underneath here. So we're going to pull that out first. We'll just lay that right up on top there so when we pull it out it's not going to get in the way. Now these two screws will have to come completely out but the one that's underneath here, we will just have to loosen up a little bit. Just about that much. Well, actually, these two screws don't have to come out either. You just got to get loosened up too. And that's it. This box can just get lifted up, pulled through the holes, and like that. So... Let's go and rebuild this puppy. All right, we got the chime box out on the bench. So now we're gonna be pulling these pins out. These pins, they're kinda of, um, bent over and curled down. So you gotta kinda of get like a needle nose pliers and bend them up a little bit so you can pull them out. They just pull straight out if you get a, enough bend out of them. Everything I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna put over here on the side. Scrub up, clean, and or polish. The reusable parts are going over there. Well, they gotta get clean too. And these just pull straight out. These just lift straight off. These are washers we're going to be reusing. I'm not reusing any of the foam bits or the rubber that goes down the middle of these things. So I'll be doing that new mod I just I, I started doing on the Williams Chime boxes. That did not want to come off good. Chimes look good. I'll take them and clean them and polish them off. Remember, big one is far. Yeah, they look pretty good. These go over here because they're getting reused. Yeah. Do you see how this stuff gets deteriorated? This foam. It just turns into pure junk. So that's all garbage. Just all pieces. Let's dump it in there. I'll just dump that whole thing in the garbage can. These little, um, they're basically, these look like airline sleeves. Those will be getting tossed out too because I use silicone to replace them. And I only had a couple of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. We had six. All right, that I'll just dump in my little garbage here. Dump these out. I gotta dig those out of the garbage can now. Let me put these over there because I gotta get washed too. Alright, next bit is getting these coils off, which are pretty straightforward and easy. I just want to see how the best way just to basically do it. We're just gonna take these two screws out first, which will allow us to get the top bar off. And then the coils will come out. And I'll go over there because that's going to get polished. These three, I might as well take, this, take that one sleeve out. I'm going to leave one sleeve in. Uh, just to take them all out. These I will just take and set over there. Now this piece will come off. These have been rebuilt once recently. This foam is in pretty good shape. But it's still getting replaced. So 
that piece. Do I really need to take this off? Yeah, let's take that off too. That way I can get a better clean on everything. And that's just two screws on the bottom here. Today's date, October 2nd, I believe, or 3rd. It's the first Saturday in October. Alright, this will get cleaned. I might take my little um, scrubby pad and scrub that off. And, um, what are we going to all clean? I guess we're going to clean all this stuff. Everything's going to get cleaned today. Cleaned and polished. Some parts will get polished, some parts will get cleaned. So I'm going to go scrub all this stuff up and then I'll be right back. Alright, we're back and everything's all nice and clean. So let's get started by reassembling the box. box is pretty simple. Just the two screws on it again. I also did polish up some parts to make them real shiny. This just has two Phillips screws. I like Phillips screws. They center easier. You can hold them better with a um, power screwdriver. Like the Gottlieb's, they use the flat head. I don't get that. Alright, we got that done. So let's get our foam on the bottom of this piece. Foam's going to lay right across here. I did my best to get the goopy, sticky stuff off. They didn't want to come off really good. I ended up using a bunch of naphtha on it and scrubbing it. But that piece was, um, somebody had re partially rebuilt this a while ago. They didn't do a full rebuild on it, but they knew that foam was rotten on the bottom, so they put a new piece on there. I'm just scratching this old junk off with a screwdriver. It doesn't matter. It's This is going to be covered up anyways. And actually the screwdriver will probably do some good because it will rough up the, the surface a little bit to allow that to stick a little better. Let's put that there and that there. Remember, it's going to go smack in the middle. And just sit like that. So we're going to pull one end off just a little bit. Get her centered. Right smack in the middle. And then we'll pull it off and push it down as we go down. There, that's perfect. You can buy this in a hardware store. It's just weather seal. Stick one side sticky weather seal. I'm just going to trim off this end here a little bit. You don't need to. But it would help if I had a nice sharp razor blade. It's got a little overhang to it. Now I'm, I'm that way. So I will trim it off. Press it down real good. Get rid of my garbage. I got a garbage can over here now so I can clean up as I go. Alright, that's on there. Let's put that back over there. Let's get at these coils and get them cleaned. And at my naps are here. And I will have to clean these Jones plugs before I put them back together. 
well, before I plug it in the machine, I should say. This I'm just basically removing all the old coil dust and dust from the cabinet and everything. It just makes them look a little cleaner and neater. You know, a clean cabinet is a pretty cabinet, it's a happy cabinet. It just looks so much nicer when you open it up. And everything's clean. I could play some tunes. I'll go for some Guns and Roses actually right now. Alright, that's that. first. I guess we'll put this one back on first. I'm just trying to figure out which way the coils went. I don't really take a picture of this chime box because I got other ones to look at. But we know it hangs like that. And um coils go up here. And it plugs in like that. But I don't know, just the way the cord is twisted and such. They have to go like that. Can you go like that? They actually route nicer that way. Ah, geez, Mark. Let's look at our pictures. This is why we take pictures. I know somebody's going like, Really, dude? I can't believe you don't know how your chime box is. And I'm like, yep. And I don't remember. You might think I work on these constantly 24 7, and I don't. Um, honey chime box. Nope. I'm um, just like you, work on them on occasion, and um, sometimes I don't take pictures when I should have, because I just thought I would know, and now I don't remember myself. Um, let's go look at my um, Skylab, because... That we did a nice video on the chime box. And I don't even have pictures of that chime box either. Wow. Okay. Um, now my goal stream. Superstar. There we go. That's how we're doing it. It's just the wire, the way the wire is routed on here, it, 
it seems different the way it's bending and everything oh man eleven do 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 see I'm human I make mistakes too so like I that's I always say take pictures now you can see uh, I even need to take pictures Now I'm holding this tight with my finger like that. So these things don't rattle in there all crazy. just go underneath and plug in like that it just it's just sloppy how the these are routed to me I'm gonna put the chime bars incorrectly this time now we're gonna cut the sleeves from the rubber silicone rubber and they will just slide over these posts like that just like that we're going to do that for all six of them I don't remember recommend cutting how I just was cutting so I've done that before and actually cut my finger You just slide over like that. I use the silicone because it lasts longer and I feel that um, the tone bars can um, ride on it better and get a better um, resonance to them because it's not hard like the um, just regular fish tank airline hose is or like the what do you call it? Um, heat shrink tubing that is known to ship with these kits. And they, it is a good for us, uh, hard press to get these on here. Which is good because you know they're going to stay snug. Alright. Those are all pressed on there now. Now we're going to take old pinball post rubber and put those on there instead of the foam blocks you normally get. The foam blocks are not good for the resonance. And you noticed these bars are all nice and shiny because I did a nice polish on them. Well, these will go on top, and then this bar will go on top of them and mush them down. You notice I polished that too. I should have polished this right away, but oh well. I didn't. But since this is my machine, I really want to get a nice polish on it so when customers come over and you either drop off their machine or look at a machine I have for sale or people just come over to visit I want to see inside they can see how clean the machines are and this just is just that little extra added oomph you know to the machine it's not needed to polish this. It's not going to make anything sound better. It's just an appearance thing. It takes me uh, about 10 minutes to polish this. 
And if you want to polish your own stuff, I got the um, Harbor Freight video of my polisher um, that's in my um, tips and tricks whatever full playlist and I'm gonna put a link in the description my friend's got a YouTube page and he does polishing he's really good at it he's got a business polishing and he's got some how-to videos on polishing. So I'm going to put his link on there and you can go check out his YouTube page. Alright, as you can see, that one might need a little adjustment. They sound better when they're going in the machine. All right, let's get that in the machine now. All right, we're back at the machine. So let's get this bugger back in there. This bottom, it just it slides onto that screw, and these other two on the top, they just rest into it like that. And then we're gonna take and tighten it back down. Let's use my other screwdriver. Since these are going on a cabinet. This machine is actually almost completely done, except um, one little issue. Not heard the chimes on this machine in a long time. There. All right, let's get her going. Switches. Yeah, I'll have to see. There's little issues yet. yet but as you can see we got chimes again I gotta work on a couple little bugs on it on that one. Did I clean the Jones plugs? No, I didn't. Let's do that. Oh. 
you kept saying you needed to clean the Jones plugs too. And that makes a big difference, Mark. That makes such a big difference on how it plays and how it sounds. Clean Jones plugs. And you just said you had to clean them too. I should have cleaned them outside the machine. I still got to vacuum this little front half here. I usually don't vacuum that till last. Because sometimes I throw crap in there as I'm working. But you had a dirty Jones plug that will um, affect how it works. If you're not getting good contact, you're not getting good contact. Still need to get fuses um, out of them yet. All right. Need a switch adjustment. That's barely. Finger on that button. Yeah, that one needs a little switch adjustment there. thing. I got some adjustments. Hope you enjoyed that video as you can see even though this game is done it still needs a little tweaking I'm guessing um, I got to do something with these contacts up here they're a little out of whack and maybe up on the relays up there I got to tweak the contacts a little bit it seems if I hold them longer they got a better zing to them so I'll be tweaking those contacts before the final gameplay you liked the video please like and subscribe follow us on facebook at mark's basement arcade and um i guess that's about it later